What do you mean by what would love for myself motivate me to do for myself? Yes, yeah, so this is the, sup the first supplemental question. What would the love for myself, if I had love for myself, what would that love motivate me to do for myself? And I think there's two parts to this question. Uh, the first part is if I truly had love for myself, I would never ask myself or manipulate myself or control myself into modifying myself spiritually, emotionally, sexually or physically into doing something that betrays myself. Mm -hmm. So this is a very important question that we need to answer. The second part of it is if I truly loved myself, I would never ask another person to do something <laughs> for myself sexually, physically, emotionally or spiritually that I need to do for myself. Mm -hmm. And that's about taking personal responsibility for yourself. So that's the second part of the, question, of, the, of the answer. So if we focus on it on the first part, which is about if I truly loved myself, I would never betray how I feel. Yeah. I would never betray how I feel in any aspect of my life. I would never manipulate or control myself or ask myself to do something that's outside or out of harmony with, with what I truly feel I should do. And so that's also not presenting a facade of what I feel I should... Or, of course. Yes. Yeah. So if I truly loved myself, I would not present a facade of myself to another person or to myself. Because in a sense, that's a betrayal of myself. Exactly. It is a betrayal of yourself. Yeah. So, so this is what a lot of people start doing in relationships. They present a facade to the other part of the person in the or other party in the relationship. When they do that, they're not realising that they're actually, in presenting a facade they are actually betraying themselves. Mm. Therefore, the person who is the other party cannot have a relationship with the true person, the real self. They're only having a relationship with the facade. So it's always going to be a fake relationship. It's always going to be a relationship that doesn't work. And sooner or later in time, generally, they see through the facade. You know, you can't maintain a facade for the rest of your existence. That's very hard to live with a person and maintain a facade for the rest of your existence is quite a difficult thing to do. Yeah. So sooner or later, most of the things that you're trying to maintain a facade about will be exposed. And if you truly loved yourself, you'd want to expose those things right at the beginning rather than expose them down the track sometime. Mm -hmm. Now, most people are afraid to expose them right at the beginning because they feel their relationship would never get started if that happened. The irony is, under all of God's laws, there's a higher potential of a relationship if you expose the facade than there is if you actually have a facade. So if you live in harmony with truth, you have a higher potential of having a relationship and also, of course, the only way of having a true relationship. And yet most people don't engage that from the beginning. And then, of course, down the track they go, but you told me this at the beginning, but that wasn't real, you know? And then there's yeah. all these complaints and all of these things and disagreements that are, arise as a result of the person not honouring themselves right at the beginning of the relationship. So the first part of this, what would my love for myself motivate me to do for myself, is this part of what your love would do is it would motivate you to always be yourself. And to never betray yourself sexually, emotionally, spiritually or physically. So, and we see, I see people betraying themselves constantly in usually one or more of those areas. Mm -hmm. So while many don't betray themselves physically, they do betray themselves spiritually, for example. So they betray their belief systems when, when there is a possibility of the relationship degrading or breaking up they then start to modify their belief system to suit their partner, for example. That is a betrayal of yourself. If you loved yourself, you wouldn't do that. Yeah. Love of yourself does not motivate you to do that. It's, it's fear that motivates you to do things like that. Yeah. With regard to the second aspect, which is if I was truly taking responsibility for all of my own personal needs, emotionally, spiritually, sexually and physically, then I would not desire that you do what I need. Mm -hmm. I would be willing to satisfy all of my own needs, including my own need to be loved. In other words, I would not be reliant on my par partner to love me because I love myself enough and I don't need my partner to love me. I want my partner to love me or desire it, but don't need it in order to survive. 
So a person who's in this state of loving themselves does not demand of their partner to do things that they themselves are not willing to supply for themselves. Mm -hmm. And this is a very important aspect of love of self. If I truly loved myself, it would motivate me to never demand that somebody else looks after me, but instead I would take full personal responsibility for absolutely everything in my life that I create. Yeah. Everything. I would take responsibility for myself physically, feeding myself, <laughs> emotionally, working my way through emotions without needing other people to be a part of that. Sexually, in other words, I'm not going to project on someone else, you've got to have sex with me before I feel desirable, or you've got to have sex with me, and if you don't, I'm going to leave you. Mm -hmm. If you truly love somebody, you don't do that, because you are willing to take care of yourself sexually, yeah. rather than have somebody else do it. Yeah. And also spiritually. In other words, I'm willing to take care of what my belief systems are, what my character development is, take responsibility for developing myself, for changing my nature, not expecting the other person to change before I change and so forth. If I truly loved myself, it would motivate me to change even when you're not changing. My partner isn't changing. I would still want to change. I would still want to grow. I would not want to remain stagnant. I would not project at my partner that they have to change before I do because I am taking full responsibility for myself. So there's quite a lot in that. There's a lot, isn't there? Yeah. And I think it's interesting, um, this idea that if I already love myself, then I don't, I don't feel the need for you to give me anything. Exactly. But also that love within me towards myself would mean that I can't betray myself, which was the first part of your answer. Exactly. The love motivates me to honour myself, doesn't it? Yes. As much as I honour someone else. Yes. Yeah. And it's also with regard to what you were commenting in the first half of your comment, is we are frequently, if you look at relationships on the planet now, frequently there is a demand by one party that the other person loves them. Yeah. Now, if we were truly interested in loving the way God loves... God does not demand that another person loves God. Mm -hmm. God doesn't demand love from any person that God has created. And yet God has given us everything. God still gives us gifts. He even gives gifts to people who do not recognise God at all. Yeah. He even gives gifts to people who totally squander those gifts. And yet he still continues to love them. So he's not demanding that we do something in return for this love. Because God knows that God's love is a gift, mm -hmm. not an expectation. Now, if I was truly taking responsibility for myself in the same manner, I would not be projecting on my partner that they have to love me. And I would not feel sad if they don't. Mm -hmm. I would actually feel that I can love myself and I don't need my partner to love me. But when my partner loves me, it's an extra special gift. <laughs> it's lovely that they want to love me. And... And the irony is, because I have this attitude now that it's not an expectation that somebody looks after me, I'm prepared to look after myself, I then recognise the gifts that are given mm -hmm. instead of having an expectation that they're given. So I see everything that my partner does for me as a gift. I don't see it as something they should have done. Yeah. And therefore, I have a lot of stronger feelings of thankfulness that come out of my soul towards my partner. Yeah. In addition, because I'm taking personal responsibility for the betrayal of myself, I'm not allowing anyone else, including my partner, to betray me because I will never betray myself. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that particular thing, I will never blame somebody else for what happens in my life because I know I am taking full responsibility for myself and also never betraying my true desires and passions, even if my desires and passions are out of harmony with God's. Yeah. I need to work on this issue. When we betray ourselves for whatever reason, we, are, we, we have no prospect of growth and we are also now presenting this facade that I mentioned. And as soon as I present a facade to you, who are you having a relationship with? You're not having a relationship with the real me. You're having a relationship with the facade me. And that's not a real relationship. It can't be ever a real relationship. It's always going to end in grief. Because 
you will sooner or later, or or I will change, you know, and it's no longer have the facade, or you will sooner or later see that I've got a facade, and you'll realise that you're not having a relationship with the person you thought you were having a relationship with. You are instead having a relationship with a person who doesn't really exist. Yeah. Now, of course, that's going to be quite that's going to cause quite a lot of upheaval in a relationship if that occurs. And it's interesting with these two things. With the first one, which is this betrayal of self issue, in fact, if you think about it, the betrayal of oneself is the highest form of betrayal because before you begin anything else, you are basically starting a relationship or any action in your life. <laughs> we, just, we just pause for the phone. Yeah. So the betrayal of, of ourselves is the highest form of betrayal. If we betray ourselves before we begin anything, then anybody who interacts with us, God or anyone else, is not really interacting with the true self. They're interacting with a figment of our own imagination or our, of our own betrayal. Mm. They are not interacting with the real self, they're interacting with the facade. Now, it's impossible to have a decent relationship with anybody who's in a facade. Whether they uh, see the facade or not, it's impossible to have a relationship. And so if we betray ourselves in any way, and that means betray our feelings and emotions, in other words, we don't own up to the fact that we feel a certain way. Mm -hmm. We betray ourselves physically. In other words, we do things physically that we don't feel like doing. We betray ourselves sexually. In other words, we do things sexually that we don't feel like doing. Or we betray ourselves spiritually. In other words, you know, we get with other people and our belief systems change. But then when we are by ourselves, our belief systems revert back to a standard form. That's betrayal of oneself. When at any time we betray ourselves in any of these aspects, we're not being real in that particular aspect. And it's impossible for another person to actually have a loving relationship with us mm -hmm. because they're having a relationship with our facade and not the real person. Yeah, just to take you back to right before when we break, you, you were starting to say that betrayal of self is the highest form of betrayal because before you start any interaction, there's already a betrayal of who you are. And exactly. I just wondered if you wanted to add anything more to that. Well, well yeah, if you, if you think about it, if I'm already betraying who I am to you before we even begin an interaction, then how can you ever have a relationship with me and how can I even ever have a relationship with me? Yeah. How, how can I even know what I really want, what I really feel, what I really need, what I really desire, what my passions and you know, desires and needs are? I can't. Yeah. So that's the problem with this betrayal that often occurs. And if I'm taking full responsibility of my own love of self, I would never betray any of those things. Mm -hmm. I would always own up to them even if they are not necessarily the way I know God feels on the certain subject, I still would not dishonour my own feelings on the subject. So I, I would go, okay, if, if I can see that God would be doing it differently through my asking of that one of the primary questions, yeah. I could see that, no, God probably wouldn't do it this way, I would still own up to the fact that I want to do it that way. Yes. And I would then, if I was truly self-responsible, which is the second part of this question, I would then examine or want to examine, take responsibility for examining why I want to do it this way. Yes. That is obviously out of harmony with God's way. And I would go, why do I do that? So let, let's, we, we can come up with examples in the example set question mm -hmm. that we asked. But these are the two things we need to bear in mind is that on one hand, we, we need to stop betraying ourselves in, in all aspects of our life in order to love ourselves. But on the other hand, we need to take personal responsibility for everything yeah. in our day-to-day -day life rather than expecting somebody else to do it for us. If I do both of those particular things, then I have a great chance of loving myself. Mm -hmm. And in fact, this is what my love of myself would motivate me to do. And if it happens to be out of harmony with God's love, the second part of my answer will actually help a person choose what to do as a result of the noticing that it's out of harmony with God. So, so if I notice that something inside of myself is out of harmony with the way God loves, then what I would do is I would choose, because I take full responsibility for myself in all these aspects of my life, I would choose to work through at a soul level, work through why 
such a condition exists in me where I want to do something that's out of harmony with God's love or that I can see is out of harmony with God's love. And this is the beautiful thing about asking yourself this question first. See, a lot of people would think that this question is almost like a selfish question, but it isn't. It's a question about what do I have to do for myself if I'm ever going to have a good relationship with someone else? Yeah. That's really what the question is asking. What do I have to do for myself? What should I be doing for myself? What do I desire to do for myself if I'm ever going to have a decent relationship with someone else? I've got to know those things. And if I don't know those things and I begin a relationship, it's not going to be a very good relationship. <laughs> No. Yeah. And, well, if we can contrast it with the way most people view, like most of us never ask this one question. And, fo- and in fact, most people don't ask the question as the very first question either. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> they are asking questions about what should my partner be doing all the time, right? But they never ask themselves, what would I be doing if I truly loved myself? Exactly. You know? And, well, and that was probably what I wanted to um, maybe highlight a little bit around this question is that most of us sort of have a feeling, or some of us have a feeling that love of ourself, that love of our partner requires a betrayal of self at times. Yes. And also that our partner's love for us would cause them to meet, to take responsibility for some stuff we don't want to take responsibility for. Yes. And, and we actually see that as a good relationship. We do. We think, <laughs> well, I sacrifice for him and then he meets some of my needs yeah. and that's love. And this is why we love each other and we're and staying together. we have a happy marriage. Yeah. Yeah, and it's really codependence then. Totally. And that's in such stark contrast to really what you're outlining. Exactly. You yeah. can't have a truly loving relationship and remain in codependence. We see a lot of people wanting to remain in codependence, of course, yeah. and many people have very strong addictions to remaining in codependence, but you're never going to have a good relationship while you want to remain in codependence. And this first question, this su- first supplementary question, mm-hmm is the key to stopping some codependence on your end. <laughs> well, that's what I was going you know. to say. The, the key to not being codependent yourself is to love yourself. Exactly. And I don't think that's something that many people really consider no. emotionally. Most people don't even want to love themselves. Yeah. And one of the primary reasons why they don't want to love themselves is because they believe if they love themselves, it means it lets everybody else off the hook for loving them. And, in, and so they have this huge projection. If I have to love myself before you love me, then I'm just letting you off the hook for loving me. Right? And that feels terrible that you'll never have to love me. Yeah. yeah. But it is true. We should let everybody off the hook for loving us because the reality is everyone doesn't have to love us because the reality is that love is a gift. So by definition, a gift is something that is given from the heart and not something they have to do. So if we have an expectation that our partner actually does love us and has to love us in order to stay with them or in order to, you know, be connected to them, then we are already out of line with perfected love. We are already out of line with a pure definition of God and cert- of love and certainly out of line with the way God loves. Mm-hmm. So this is a very core part of our questioning, self-questioning. And, it, and as a result, it needs to be the first question we ask. What would my love of myself cause me to do in terms of a betrayal of myself or or to not betray myself? And what would my love for myself cause me to take responsibility for in my my own life? These are very, very important questions that are a part of this supplementary question. This supplementary question needs to be the first supplementary question we ask. So, So my suggestion to people is this. If they're having relationship problems and difficulties... Instead of saying, I have my relationship problems and difficulties because my partner doesn't do this or that or this or that and this happens and that happens and my partner does this and that. Instead of doing all of that, forget all that for a moment and ask yourself, what would my love of myself motivate me to do for myself? Yeah. Yeah. And if I could um, make, because you've outlined two aspects of that and I have some notes here that you've written as well and perhaps if I can just read out a couple of sentences... Um, so you've said the, the first thing is not to have a betrayal of yourself if you loved yourself. And yes. It's something you've written here which is very beautiful. In a relationship, there are two people that would love you completely, yes. yourself and your partner. Yes. If you love yourself, you will not be able to take an action that results in the betrayal of your deepest feelings. Exactly. So that's the first aspect. Yeah. And then the second one that... 
of taking self-responsibility, basically. Mm -hmm. And you've written here, if I expect other people to do for me what I am able to do for myself, but avoid that for any reason, that I'm avoiding something I can do for myself, then I'm not loving to either myself or the other person. Yes. If I'm unable to do something for myself and yet wish it to happen, then I cannot expect that anyone else do it for me. What others do for me is yeah. a gift. Yeah. yeah. And, and so this, part, this is the important part of that too, is that even if I'm unable to do it for myself, I can't expect you to do it for me. Does that mean? So yes, like, yes. So, uh, like, from a, we can get real, you know, yeah. uh, we can get real blunt with a lot of our examples here. But, yes. You know, I, and, and probably what we need to do is, is have asked the question about the examples and yeah. then we can, start yeah. work, we can start helping people through their question about examples, yep. um, how to actually see it in, a, in operation in practical, in, in practical areas of their life. All right, so should we move on to the next yeah. question? Yeah. Okay. Good.